In the fall of 2020, I traveled to Amsterdam in the Netherlands, shortly after the city had reopened most of its attractions. In this video, I want to show you what traveling in the Netherlands is like now and share my top 20 things to do in Amsterdam. Welcome to Amsterdam and I'm here today with my good friend Vilma. Hi. She will be joining me from this trip and uh, where are you from? I'm from Italy. So we're gonna start with the number one side as usual and that's the Rijksmuseum. It's right around the corner. Let's go and take a look. The beautifully designed Rijksmuseum from 1885 is most famous for its large collection of Dutch masters from the 17th century. Its most important works include Rembrandt's The Night Watch, Vermeer's Milkmaid, Hals's The Merry Drinker and Steen's The Merry Family. I also really like the porcelain and dollhouse collections of the museum, which give a great impression of the lifestyle in rich Dutch households during the Netherlands' so-called Golden Age. And I think this really only exists in Amsterdam. There's a bicycle lane game going right through the middle of the museum. Pretty cool. Look around you, by the way. This is so beautiful. All the canals. So pretty. We decided to take a break here at this super traditional Dutch cafe right next to the water and of course I decided to get a Dutch specialty those are the bitterballen and those are fried potato balls as you can see here and they're served with mustard and of course I got the traditional Dutch Heineken beer so cheers! Okay let's try! So what do you think? Good? Yes. All right. So here we are on the central square of Amsterdam. This is the Dam and this is the place where the city was originally founded around 1270. The Dam Square derives its name from its original function as a dam on the Amstel River. In the 13th century, it connected the settlements on both sides of the Amstel and gave the city its name, Amsterdam. Today, the square is a major national gathering spot and home to the National Monument, which commemorates the victims of the Second World War and subsequent armed conflicts. And here I'm standing in front of the Royal Palace. So, as you know, there is a king in the Netherlands. His name is Willem Alexander. This is his official residence, even though he's rarely here because he prefers to live in Den Haag. The Royal Palace was originally built as a city hall during the Dutch Golden Age in the 17th century. Its rooms are lavishly decorated with chandeliers, gilded clocks and spectacular paintings. The city hall first became a royal palace in 1808, when Napoleon installed his brother Louis as King of the Netherlands. After Napoleon's defeat, the palace was taken over by the kings and queens of the House of Orange Nassau, which still reigns today. And the church here, all right, this is the new church on Jürgen in Dutch. It is the official place for the investiture of the Dutch kings and queens. Built in the 15th century, the late Gothic Nieuwe Kerk is nowadays mostly used as an exhibition space and concert hall. Its relatively austere interior is dominated by a massive carved oak pulpit, a bronze choir screen, an organ, and enormous stained glass windows. In 2002, the new kerk was the location for the wedding of Willem Alexander and Maxima, the current king and queen of the Netherlands. We walked around the city center some more, and then it was already time for dinner. So we are now in a traditional Dutch restaurant called Heeski Ples, and I got a very traditional Dutch dish. This is stamppot, which means it's mashed potatoes with carrots, in this case and onions, smoked sausage and slices of bacon. And it looks really delicious. Let's try it. And what did you get, Vilma? What did you get? <laughs> very modest.
Good morning. Good morning. And today we'll start with one of the most important museums in Amsterdam. That's of course the Van Gogh Museum. I'm super excited for this one. I'm a big fan. Let's check it out. Vincent van Gogh struggled with mental illness, depression and poverty for most of his adult life and committed suicide when he was only 37 years old. And despite all of this, in less than 10 years, he created around 2,100 works of art and developed a unique painting style that laid the foundations for modern art as we know it. The Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam houses the largest collection of Van Gogh paintings in the world and provides a good insight into the painter's life. such a great museum and now we're moving on to our next experience and if you enjoy beer this one is for you and we made it this is the Heineken experience the Heineken experience is hosted in the historic building of the first Heineken brewery from 1867 it is a great place to learn about the history of the Heineken brand and their style of beer brewing. Some of the fun activities at the experience include a roller coaster like simulation of what it's like to be a beer and the opportunity to create your own personalized Heineken bottle. Of course, there's also a chance to try the beer for yourself. Next, we walked over to one of Amsterdam's main shopping attractions. And here we are now at the Albert Kuip Market. This is Amsterdam's largest street market. You can get all kinds of things here like clothes, but also fresh produce, vegetables, fruit. It's so cool and it's huge. The Albert Kuip Market is one of Europe's largest daytime markets. Behind the stalls, there are lots of Chinese, Indonesian, Suriname, Moroccan and Turkish restaurants. And of course, the market offers lots of options to try traditional Dutch snacks. So we're here now at a tiny restaurant in the middle of the market. We've got a traditional Dutch food called croquette. Let's try it. Mm. It's really good. So it has meat inside, potato and some cheese, I think. It's really delicious. And it's time for dessert, and I got a stroop waffle, which is a waffle, and it's very fresh. They slice it in the middle, and then they put caramel inside. It looks so good. Let's try it. Mm. Yeah, it's much better. I've had the one from the store, but this is super fresh and warm, so it's delicious. After a walk through the market, we took the tram to get to Amsterdam's quirkiest museum. And this is the Captain Cabinet, the Cat Cabinet, which is a museum dedicated entirely to cats. And there's also alive cats inside. Housed in an elegant 17th century canal side mansion, the weird and wonderful Katten Cabinet showcases lots of cat related paintings, prints, and sculptures. It also has photos of feline-loving celebrities, a pretty garden, a gift shop, and real-life cats that you can pet during your visit. And as you can easily see when you look behind me, we're now at the Blumenmarkt, the flower market where they sell thousands of different varieties of bulbs and flowers. The Blumenmarkt was set up in 1862 as a floating flower market on the single canal. Back then, flower traders used to travel down the Amstel River and sold their produce straight from their boats. Nowadays, the market is mostly geared towards tourists hunting for the perfect tulip-themed souvenir. The Netherlands are one of the biggest cheese producers worldwide and Dutch people eat more than 14 kilograms of cheese per year on average. The popular Henry Villers cheese shops allow you to sample lots of different varieties and offer many inventive flavors including cumin, herbs and garlic, coconut and even asparagus. 
right so i just came back out from the cheese shop and i got this one here it's the juicy garlic variety especially the garlic was tasted by a lot of different cheeses and this one was my favorite In the evening, I decided to go for a drink in one of Amsterdam's big nightlife hubs. So, here I am now on the light supply in one of the absolute main squares when it comes to nightlife in Amsterdam, especially on Friday night. It really feels kind of like a normal night out. You can't really tell that this is the new normal. Except for one thing, there's only Dutch people here. There's not a single tourist here. And I know because I had to put my phone number and I could see the other people's phone numbers and they're all Dutch numbers. So only Dutch people here. It's crazy, but a really cool party atmosphere. So cheers for Proost, as they say here in Amsterdam. So today we're gonna to visit one of the most impressive sites of all of Amsterdam and one of the most moving sites for sure. We're going to the Anne Frank house and it's right around the corner. So we already booked our tickets online. Very important, you have to reserve the tickets online nowadays. Anne Frank was a young Jewish girl who was forced to hide together with her family and a few of their friends during the Nazi occupation of the Netherlands in 1942. For two years, she lived in a secret annex in the back of an Amsterdam warehouse and kept a diary in which she confided her thoughts and described her difficult life in hiding. In 1944, the family was discovered and sent to concentration camps. Only Anne's father, Otto, survived and published her diary in 1947. It is one of the most important and moving accounts of the Holocaust. After our visit to the museum, it was time for lunch. So, as you might know, a true Dutch specialty are pancakes, and now we're at one of the best places to have pancakes in Amsterdam. This is the Pancake Bakery, and check out this amazing pancake that I got. I got the French one. It has goat cheese, dried tomatoes, and pine nuts. It looks absolutely amazing. It's a flavor explosion. So, which one did you get? The American pancakes with yogurt, blueberries, and honey, and whipped cream. It's massive. So after the delicious savory pancake, I decided to get one of the most traditional Dutch sweets, and those are pokerchis. These are tiny baby pancakes, and here they're served with powdered sugar and butter. And I think it's gonna be so delicious. Let me try it. Wow, really soft on the inside, really juicy. Wow, delicious. So now we are in an area called Nine Streets or Negenstraatjes in Dutch. It's a super pretty shopping area with tiny little streets. That's where the name comes from. And there's lots of different shops that sell all kinds of funny items. Some interesting cafes and shops in the Negenstraatjes area are the Screaming Beans Cafe, the Zipper Second Hand Shop, the It's a Present Gift Shop, the Waxwell Record Store, and the excellent The Kaaskammer Cheese Shop. So it's time to try out the most typical mode of transportation here in Amsterdam. That's of course the bike. We're gonna go for a tour in the famous Bondel Park that is just around the corner. Covering over 47 hectares, Bondel Park is Amsterdam's biggest city park. It is extremely popular with locals and an ideal place for riding bikes, having a picnic or just going for a walk. Attractions inside the park include a beautiful rose garden, several cafes, a Picasso sculpture, and even an outdoor theater.
I decided to take a quick break here by this fountain and I must say this park is so beautiful, especially right now around sunset time. It's a perfect place to come and relax. The company is making it very clear that, yes, they are open. Excellent, because that's what we're going to do next. Seeing Amsterdam from the water on a canal cruise is one of the best ways to experience the unique charm of this city. During our cruise in an open boat, we saw many iconic 17th century buildings, the Rijksmuseum, lots of historic bridges and the Nemo Science Museum. Vilma and I really enjoyed the peaceful evening atmosphere. I think also it was so much fun and if you want to do the boat tour I highly recommend doing it in the open boat because you get a much better view and it's much much better for taking pictures we saw some of the close boats and we're really glad that we got an open one. Oh man that was so much fun also definitely one of my favorite experiences here in Amsterdam all right so it's gotten dark we quickly went uh, back to the hotel to put on warmer clothes, which I think was a great decision because it does get quite cold here at night in September. And now we're gonna head out to get the best French fries in Amsterdam. And I think Wilmer is excited, are you? So excited. So we got the mannequin piss fries and it looks so good. It's huge actually, this is the medium size. I'm glad we didn't get the big one because that would have been way too big. And you can pick whichever sauce you like. So I got three different ones to try it out. So how do you like the mannequin piss fries? Yes. <laughs> Are they good? Yeah. So we made a quick detour into the red light district, just got back out of it and uh, obviously couldn't really film there. Uh, ladies who work didn't like to be filmed but it's interesting because it was one of the busiest parts of the city I've seen so far so apparently that's recession proof. So those are my recommendations for Amsterdam. What are yours? If you're from there or if you've been there before, please make sure to leave your tips and advice in the comment box below this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Max Nomad for new travel videos published every week. I'm Max Nomad and I will talk to you again soon.